And here is the Writer's Almanac for Saturday. It's March the 9th, 2019. 1913 on this day, Virginia Woolf delivered the manuscript for her first novel, The Voyage Out to the Duckworth Publishing House in London. She had been working on it for almost seven years. By 1912, she had written five drafts of the novel, including two different versions that she worked on simultaneously. And then she rewrote the entire novel one more time, almost from scratch, 600 typewritten pages. Came out in 1915, got good reviews, but it sold slowly, took about 15 years to sell 2,000 copies. One of its characters was Clarissa Dalloway, who would stick in Virginia Woolf's mind for more than ten years, and then she wrote an entire novel about that woman. Mrs. Dalloway came out in 1927. It was on this day, 1933, that President Franklin D. Roosevelt, newly inaugurated, called a special session of Congress and began the first hundred days of enacting New Deal legislation, bills passed almost daily, beginning with the Emergency Banking Act, the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Public Works Administration, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the Federal Writers Project, which employed over 6,000 out-of-work writers, including John Cheever, Saul Bellow, Richard Wright, Studs Terkel, Ralph Ellison, paid them about $20 a week to work on the American Guides series, an American guide for each of the states. It's the birthday of Vita Sackville West in Seven Oaks in Kent, England, 1892, born to luxury in an enormous mansion. Before her 19th birthday, she'd written eight novels and five plays. She's best known for her novels, her later novels, including Seducers in Ecuador, The Edwardians, and Thirty Clocks Strike the Hour in the 30s. When she was 21, she married Harold George Nicholson, a diplomat, and the two of them, both bisexual, had what has come to be known as an open marriage. They enjoyed a very close, companionable relationship and wrote each other frequent and affectionate letters whenever they were apart, even as they took other lovers. In 1922, she wrote to her husband about her meeting with Virginia Woolf and said, I have quite lost my heart. Vita Sackville West was the inspiration for Virginia Woolf's novel Orlando. It was on this day in 1997 that Jean-Dominique Bobby died of pneumonia, a French journalist who at the age of 43 suffered a massive stroke and awoke three weeks later to find himself a victim of locked-in syndrome. His mind intact, but he was almost entirely paralyzed except for his left eyelid. He spent his final year and a half in a hospital room where he wrote a book, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, a memoir of life in death. He died two days after it was published. In 2007, the memoir was made into a movie directed by Julian Schnabel. Here's a poem for today by John Clare a poem from the early 19th century, The Winter Spring. The winter comes, I walk alone, I want no bird to sing. To those who keep their hearts their own, the winter is the spring. No flowers to please, no bees to hum, the coming springs already come. I never want the Christmas rose to come before its time. The seasons, each as God bestows, are simple and sublime. I love to see the snowstorm hing, tis but the winter garb of spring. I never want the grass to bloom, the snowstorm's best in white. I love to see the tempest come, and love its piercing light. The dazzled eyes that love to cling, o'er snow-white meadows, sees the spring. I love the snow, the crumpling snow that hangs on everything. It covers everything below like white dove's brooding wing, a landscape to the aching sight, a vast expanse of dazzling light. It is the foliage of the woods that winters bring, 
the dress, white Easter of the year, in bud that makes the winter spring. The frost and snow his posies bring, nature's white spurts of the spring. John Clare's poem, The Winter's Spring. And that's the Writer's Almanac for Saturday, March the 9th, 2019. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.